Hi Amanda Armstrong and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. Many people have commented that my mat is looking very crusty musty and it's basically 4.46 on a Sunday so kind of could be settling down to watch some telly or playing some video games but I kind of think I might have a quick go at seeing if there's any way of finishing this. I'm not sure if I'm going to bother filming the process. By the way, people have asked why does it have these things. That's because this mat was actually supposed to be double layered so these would be actual cutouts and you have another mat underneath so these are just for holding all your screws and knickknacks at the edge so that's quite a nice idea really wasn't it? Never really used it because I just used it on the bench but maybe I could use it without these. Yeah, Future mat perhaps. So I'm going to see though if I can do anything with this. I probably won't film it too much because it might be dangerous for me to try to film and use power tools but I will show you maybe the tools I'm going to try to use. Right, let's go on an adventure. Bird's eye potato waffles. They're waffly versatile. Name that machine. Right, so I kind of think I'm going to try to use that um, single-handedly, of course. Now, the, one of the features of this, because if you're trying to do that a thing, you can see there's a wire in front of the screen. This is terrible here. Right, so if you're going to get the wire, the microphone, we're so unprofessional. Now, how do you do that. I could rub it across like that when it's running. And these machines also have a nice feature where, I don't know how you do it, oh yeah there you go, that whole thing can come up vertical like. So you see you've got a little ledge there? So you can just put that in and just go So that's what I'm going to try to do. If I can perch the camera anywhere, I shall. It's looking good here. Not so good here. This big blob of resin is going to be tricky, isn't it? Nice! This is looking good. Looking very good. I think I'll have to do a grand reveal. So look at that. Isn't that a wonder to see? It's almost a pure back office board. It does have a few imperfections, I'll have to admit. There are some resin blops stuck in these places and there are bits of metal actually have got in there and they've been ground in. They are part of the fabric of the board. But it's quite nice to see that sort of patina of age. You know, it's it's showing you it's a legit thing. It's been it's being lovingly restored and I'm mixing this. This is a pot of polyester resin and I haven't bothered to to do it correctly. You're supposed to mix the hardener to the resin 30% by weight. So I've done it all by eye. So that's pretty dodgy. I'm also wearing brand new clothes. So uh, in the video you've noticed me wearing around my brand new hoodie with a brand new t-shirt and brand new things and I really shouldn't be doing this if my wife catches me. She will have an absolute fit about that. So I'm just mixing this up. You see me mixing resin a lot on this show and I have to admit I could almost call it the resin show couldn't I? I use so much resin. So this is not like the other resins you've seen me use. This is a, a polyester resin and rather having a cure time of literally a minute because I always use those fast ones, this one's going to have a slow long cure time. Its pot life is something like 35 minutes. So once you've mixed it you've got half an hour to get it on here. So I'm basically going to just pour it on. Um, but I actually do have something that came in another order and I'm going to show you that now actually I'm just going to put that aside let's let that sit for a moment um, I was going to do an unboxing video but I'll show you this now and there's two of these two kits and these are kits for rings so the idea is if you're going to make some rings for your fingers and rings for your toes you shall have rings wherever you goes 
And I thought this could be fun for sort of kids and putting an RFID chip in a ring that you wear on your finger. I don't know. You know, it's just something to do. It's, it's sort of a mould. So I'm going to put those aside because I think I might have some resin left and we could see how they come out. And then in a future video, decide what we're going to embed in some rings. I mean, NFC stuff seems like a no-brainer. Crikey, I've made loads of this, by the way. I've probably made... Mm, about half a Coke can full, maybe a bit more than that. And I don't really want too much air in it, but unlike the quick resin, it, it does take, you know, you have time with it. So let's just roll with it, shall we? So I'm just going to pour some in those deep areas. There we go. So I want it to kind of fill in those parts there, because that's the problem with this board. It was never really smooth. Um, so this should now make it quite smooth and I'm just going to run around with it. I don't really, I don't know how much resin I need and I don't want to have too much and I want to, I don't want to have to mix more up. So let's leave that at now. I'm just going to, it's sitting on a box which is kind of dodgy as well. If that box drops and this goes on my lap, it's divorce time I'm afraid. You won't be seeing me on YouTube anymore, I'll be too busy in court with my wife complaining that I went through too many sets of trousers, brand new trousers covered in oil. Anybody at home ever do that? Get new clothes, instantly destroy them in the garage, in the shop, wherever you are? Yep. I know I'm not alone, by the way. I, there are definitely guys out there like me who have this ability just to ruin clothes. That's why for a long time, in fact, till Quite recently, I buy a lot of clothes in charity shops because they're all work clothes. I don't need no good going out fancy schmancy clothes. I need clothes that are hardy to the ravages of a garage. Look at that, though. that's beautiful, right? Look at this. Look at that. I'm, just, I'm not going right to the edges just yet because, I don't know, it sounds like, it seems like a messy proposition but what I will do I'm gonna let this self level so once I've got got it into all the nooks and crannies I'm gonna basically pour a bunch more on and let it go over the edges and, and self level and it's gonna drip that's why I've got it on a, a cardboard it might look a bit weird to you today because the board is sitting a few inches higher than usual the cat then the camera is used to oh no I've got some on my fingers And there's no smell of this resin. It's not that giving that same kind of crazy, catalysty, chemical fumey fumes that might than the usual resin I use. So it's a bit nice because of that. A bit nicer to work with. Ah! I've just realised this sort of ruler inset thing is starting to fall out of the bottom. That's not good. So we'll have to work out a way of keeping that up. I should have glued it in first, damn it. Working it to the edges. I might put like a tray or something flat underneath this once I've done the first bit. But look, I think that's looking pretty good now. I'm just going to work some now to the edges. Ah! Too much. I want to butter it so that it, it breaks the surface tension so it knows it can go to the edge, but I don't really want it to go over the edge right now. I want it to have a form of meniscus and sort of hover, hover there on surface tension near that edge. Yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're digging it, we're loving it. Right, uh, I think that is good stuff. I'm gonna leave that to settle now while I go and find something to put under this corner before it goes terribly wrong. Mission accomplished. Just getting another uh, 
ice cream stick out. I mean, we've got a little proud bit here, but I think we're going to live with that a bit. So I think what I'm going to do now then is just to make sure there's no shallow areas, as it were. I can see a few dry spots, actually. I'm just going to make sure I get all of those dry spots. I think I saw some on this edge. Very hard to see. It's such a shiny surface. It's like um, staring into a mirror. It's... Zigzag. Right, oh, I think I think that's just worth leaving now and just letting it settle. I do have these ring moulds. I'm going to fill some of these off off the edge. You can't see them; they're off the side of the camera. But while I'm here, I'm just going to fill those up. It is, of course, the day after, and look at this! Isn't it absolutely fantastic? I gave it a, another gentle coat actually. The first coat hardened after about two or three hours. Well, I say hardened, cured, right? And uh, I poured a bunch more on and it kind of didn't flow as nicely because I think that the um, it doesn't have that same surface to soak in to like the first surface, but I wanted it even because the board was at a slight angle and it had kind of pushed away, so I had a dry edge. So anyway, I made sure it was flat this time. I mixed up with the same uh, ratio of resin and everything. And all I did is I just very loosely dragged the brush across it to make sure it was just even Stevens. But I wasn't like pulling the resin. I was just stippling it like that. And uh, yeah, I've obviously ruined the brush. If you're doing this, make sure you have plenty of brushes because you're going to go through them. And it's come out really well. I mean, look at it. It is absolutely shiny look at the shine in that i don't even know if it's it's suitable anymore as a, a back office board because it's so so reflective um but it really is it, it is a wonderful thing to behold to be honest with you it's kind of it, it seems to me like something that i want to like hang on the wall now like a, and you see a plaque you know like a deep deep varnished plaque and it's really heavy it's 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 got a lot more weight to it now because it's it's got like a couple of mil of plastic on the front but we'll see how it goes I'm going to let it cure now so you need to really make sure these cure for at least 24 hours if not more because this is going to be kind of soft now and easily damaged um, it may well be actually that once you know once it's finished I might just kind of buff it down with some I don't know 600 grit or something just to take that shine off it so it just becomes a work board Ah, that's if I, uh, you know, can bear to bring myself to sort of abuse it again. But we'll see. We'll see. But I'm just going to put this away because there's something else I want to show you. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Feast your eyes on my jewellery offering. So this is the little jewellery moulds that we tried. And um, I can see some of them are successful and one of them's not. So you've got to be careful here. So I'm going to start with the the broken one which is a sort of shame in a way but have a look at that um it's kind of fractured within there and it may well be looking at it in fact let's pop this out shall we so i'm just going to pop this out it could be that there was some air bubbles in there or i was just a bit heavy-handed so you can see that's broken but that is kind of repairable in a way because you can just chuck those pieces out I could easily pop that back in, you see, and then just fill in another bit of resin there. It might, it might be good. Um, I'm not sure if I'm probably better off cutting it here and here, and then really scuffing these up so that the replacement has something to fit into. But look, that's cute. It's a nice little transistor thing. Maybe we can do something with that. Certainly, it's a good one for experimenting and polishing. Oops, pushed it back in the wrong way round. It didn't like that. 
don't damage your, your moulds. It would be nice to see if you can polish them because you see this side's got slight air bubbles, so get rid of that. And let's have a look at some of the others here. You know, it's a bit like the sort of um, art programs, isn't it, where you're sort of going through Tony Hart. Do, 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 do. So all these moulds, though, are different sizes for different fingers. So, you know, they're kind of all small. I mean, that's kind of a... They're kind of lady size, but look at that. That's quite cute, isn't it? That's quite a nice bit of jewellery. And you can imagine, if you have, like, an RFID, an RFID chip, you could easily embed that. Or how about actually hooking these up because look you got your LED your photo uh, diode you can put a bit of a silica, uh, silicon solar cell in there you've got some surface mount resistors that's got everything in it how about this one this one is a random set of passives so you've got your uh, couple of capacitors resistor and a diode yeah, it's kind of cute I mean I'm looking at them I'm wondering are they all the same size no, they are different because this is a 19. This one says 19 on it. One says 17. I can see an 18. So I don't know if that's millimetres. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's almost, almost a size that would fit a man. But look at that. That's a, a nice little resistor there. And, uh, yeah, I could zoom out a bit. You don't need so much detail. You can see what's going on here. Ah, this one is where I didn't. You can see just the notch. You, you, I wait till I zoom out. Look at that. You can see there's a notch in there. That was an air bubble. So should have just made sure I poked around with a toothpick or something to make sure there was no air bubble in there. But yeah, it's weird. That's got a strange inclusion in there. I'm going to zoom in because it is actually interesting enough to zoom in. So you can see the air bubble there on that side. See it? That little dinkus right there. But inside there, you see there there's a line. It's a very strange inclusion I'm not sure what that is is it on the set no it's inside it it's not just oh focus it's actually inside it something so hmm be careful let's have a look at this one then again up close now this is a problem look you see I've overfilled that one I'm gonna have trouble getting this out so this is another good example of one that uh, you know you can test your theories out on how to polish and cut these because you're gonna have to cut that out maybe drill it out you can see it's nice and sharp where oh it's nice and sharp but yeah oh okay okay no that's probably salvageable that's probably salvageable but yeah you definitely don't want to overfill it if you can help it but yeah there's your transistor and you can see it's still actually kind of soft so it hasn't quite cured yet and I guess if you think about it, it's a nice big chunk there it will take a bit of time so you've got a little bit of time for that and we've got the last one which is hard to get wrong of course where it's just the single single resistor so we got a lot of jewelry jewelry there uh, I'm not sure if it's jewelry that anybody would want but uh, let me know your opinions on this electro jewelry and what could we do with it how can we techify it all up um, our NFC, RFIDs, should we just have it, you wave your finger and something, ah, aho, that's that one with all of that internal stuff in there, oh my crikey, that's a sharp one, it's like flint, hello, hello, <laughs> Joel Regal, re so, Anyway, hope that uh, resining experience has been uh, fun for you and uh, we will see what I do with that back office board. I guess I'm going to have to use it, but it might be too shiny going forward. As ever, thank you for watching.